Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, and um, that's right, you read the title of what I'm reviewing, but I'm not doing this alone, because um, once again, aside from, uh, like, say, me and Little Blue, and uh, if you guys remember, I, I did this a few times, and with my, with my other good friend, Elijah Goring, uh, from Atlantis, Monsters at Work, etc., well, this time, uh, for this review, I've got another friend of mine and a special guest, and that is none other, and who, at times, he's actually, uh, I've given him, I've given him shout-outs, he's requested, he had, he has, at times, requested me to review some films from Alice in Wonderland, you know, and he's finally joining me, f uh, reviewing, uh, an animated feature, and here he is, the one and only, even though it's just, there's just a picture of him, as you see on, on, in the video, my good friend Trent Martin. It's good to have you, Trent. Hey. Yep. So we are, of course, reviewing none other. And yeah, I've definitely, I've definitely been wanting to review this. Uh, and you know, Trent, he jumped to the chance, and I'm happy to have him with me. We are, of course, reviewing none other than the Brave Little Toaster. Now, for me, I see the Brave Little Toaster as well, just an an animated gem, like. A few people from Disney had worked had worked on this film, like a handful of Disney animators had worked on this film, and I guess, you know, it was an independent film, you know, and it had, uh, for many years, it had trouble finding a distributor, but, you know, to me, I see it as a Disney film, there's no doubt about it, you know, because it's got, it's got the people from Disney, you know, you got some familiar Disney voices, which we will mention, um, and so, Trent, what, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you, Trent, so what are, what, what do you think of the Brave Little Toaster? Anything to say? Well, well, I don't, I don't watch the whole thing yet. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, I did heard of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah, and strangely enough, so it's like you know the only the sequels are on Disney Plus, which yeah, I will review those definitely, but not the very first one. I just don't know. I. I don't know, because I've been hearing, like, some, you know, people say that they don't, like, Disney does not own the first one, but I heard that they, but here's the thing, I swear, because I read on IMDb, they did bought it, and at many, I remember seeing this on Disney Channel, it, it had been on Disney Channel many times, not to mention when Toon Disney was around, and I remember Toon Disney's big movie show, etc., but... And it's based off of a book, as you may know, um, with its cat with, um, because the animation's great, the cast of characters, um, and the cast of characters, let me tell you, because, like, of course, Toaster, actually being voiced by a woman, actually, uh, Dana Oliver, yeah, I said that right, um, pretty good, and that ha that's happened many times, like, female voice actresses, they'll voice male characters, you know? Um, then, uh, there's Blanky and, uh, Lampy and the radio, and, um, uh, the radio voiced by John Levitz, like, actually, um, the director of the, like, the writer of The Brave Little Toaster had, had him in mind and was able to, from what I heard, like, was able to get him to record all, all his lines, like, a marathon or just something, I don't know, because I guess he was on, on, on a, he was on, he was on a very tight schedule for something he had to do tight schedule to uh do something i don't know uh saturday night live i i don't know to be honest but um and then uh because um blanky well not blanky but lampy like from what i can tell because like at times like at the beginning and throughout the film because well lampy starts off being kind of a jerk or something and but he slightly you know changes you know and because of what happens in the film a change of heart or something from being kind of a jerk to a nice lamp i guess you could say Blanky just really missing the master, you know, the, their, the, the, um, their, their master and so on. And, um, of course, a beloved character from the film, Kirby, the vacuum cleaner. And this shirt I'm wearing, Kirby and Kirby, you get the joke. Um, and Kirby being, being voiced by legendary, legendary and legendary voice actor and a Disney treasure, I'd say, Thurl Ravenscroft, you know done so many voices for Disney, and, um, yeah, because he's definitely the voice of, of Kirby for sure, and, um, that infamous scene, that, that, that infamous scene with the air conditioner, voiced by the late, great, legendary actor Phil Hartman, 
Um, just some of the dialogue of Hartman and like the characters, especially because with Kirby and, and the and the air conditioner, you know, why don't you just shut off? You know, yeah, I'm real scared there, Kirby. What are you gonna do? Suck me to death? Just that, and you know, like I think the air conditioner, like he's because you know they're trying to get to him. Like I think you're jealous. Sure, I'm jealous of a bunch of dimwits. You know, yeah, because the master never played with you. Cause you're stuck in a wall and. He just goes berserk and uh, about to blow a fuse because, you know, it's my function! And, um, you know, and of course, you know, the cottage that they, ob that they were living in and where the master used to be, like, being sold. And Toaster has an idea to go, to go find the master. And uh, some songs here and there, uh, th th I have some pretty good songs, you know, like one song that they sing as they are, you know, as they leave the cottage and so on. And not to mention some, you know what, some stuff that were, that was considered to be cut, but they stayed in, like one sequence where Toaster has a nightmare and it has to do with a clown. Um, yeah, quite scary and uh, some others. Uh, do, do you remember, and uh, cutting, coming to you, Trent, do you, do you at least remember any scene or anything from the film? Was there one scene where they were in the woods or looking for the master in the woods that spent the night under a tree or something? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I, I, think, I, yeah, I, think I do remember that one, that scene. Yeah, any scene in the film, if you could remember. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I remember that scene where they're, like, fighting or spending the night in, in a tree or in the woods or something. Yeah. I think I remember that one. There's like, and there's, like, a storm that occurs and it blows Blanket away and, uh... Even up to when they make their they make their way up to a waterfall, and I think yeah, Kirby has a seizure and he's like eating his own cord, and they tr they 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 try they help him of course get better, and just Kirby he just has had enough and just like you know just keep your antennas and waters off, you know but who needs you guys anyway? Gotta drag you around all the time, bunch of dim weight. I'd be better off without you, and uh, and Kirby just being typical Kirby, grumpy and so on, but. You know what? It's shows in the film because he has heart, especially, and not to mention when they're trying to get across to the other side of the waterfall, and Toaster is like, is having a fear of, you know, because he looks down and having that fear, and they all fall down except for Kirby, and that's when Kirby jumps in and saves them, and oh yeah, and coming up to where, of course, um, Elmo S.T. Peters, uh, who finds them as they were about to sink, I guess in a mud or quicksand, I don't know, I can't remember, but Elmo being voiced by the late great Pixar legend Joe Ranft and, um, like, taking apart some, you know, parts from appliances and so on, you know, objects, and, um, you know, I have that, that, and, uh, tubes, that thing, and another great song, too, in that, it's, you know, um, it's like a movie, a B-movie, I've, forget how it's titled, but I had actually recently kind of had that song stuck in my head, but, you know, um, you don't remember, you, uh, coming to you, Trent, do you, do you at least remember that, that, that sequence too, at that, at that shop, you know, of Elmo's store? Uh, I, I, probably, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, objects, uh, they're, they're a place, you know, where they, their version of being killed or something, just something like that, and, you know, that there's like one lamp or, you know, ceiling lamp and voiced by, once again, Phil Hartman. He's doing a, he's clearly, he's doing a Peter Lorre impression. You know, at this, you know, that's, that's, you know, you don't look so good. That's, that's, it's definitely a Peter Lorre impression. Um, but eventually, and the radio is almost about to be murdered, like, you know, his part's being taken off. But of course, um, Lampy, he has an idea. In fact, Earlier in the film, because I forgot to mention, Lampy, uh, Lampy had some ideas of how they could, like, leave the cottage and still run by battery, but none of them worked up until when he does have a plan where this plan he, he has for saving radio does work. So, yeah, and um, it's just funny. One part, one scene is, as they're all, like, uh, you know, they scare, after they scare Elmo and they, the objects, like, they run away, uh, you know, jailbreak, I think, is one bullhorn says, I'm pretty sure. Elmo's dog gets in the monster truck and drives off, and 
up on up until we uh we get to see the master all grown up and now has a girlfriend um chris yeah even yeah females can be named chris um so that okay and like um they're making their way to the cottage i mean little do the know little do the the toaster and the and the gang know that the master was on his way to the cottage and the new like good looking appliances like objects you know uh uh house items you know at the where like the master currently was living and even one one uh, house item that from the cottage i th i suppose and from there you know the tv and uh another song too when uh the toaster and the gang they make their way to i guess the apartment that the master i'm just calling him the master i can't remember his name unfortunately um a113 that's the apartment you know I, you remember a113 don't you trent in every pixar film almost yeah oh yeah yeah that's, well yeah and because you know cuz people you know people from disney well they went to disney they, they were part of disney but you know some of them of course moved to pixar like from john laster and joe ram so yeah so a1 for a113 making a cameo um so a song happens like oh yeah plugsy that's the that's the purple purple lamp you know and uh like he and like the others they sing a song i forget the name but you know Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. I've got it on the tablet here, so I can look up the songs. Um, oh, so. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I almost forgot to mention that David Newman, he's the composer of this film. Um, this was actually his favorite, I've, as I recall, his favorite film that he had ever scored. Um, yeah, yeah. So the song, like, uh, it's a B-movie, so I got that right. Um, let me see, uh, I think it's Cutting Edge, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Cutting Edge, that's the name of the song, the new appliance, the new household items, singing a song to, you know, Toaster and the gang, them being old appliances, like items, you know, I keep saying appliances, um, and coming up to the junkyard, and, uh, this is where, cause that, 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 like, I wouldn't say he's not really an antagonist, but the, kind of the, somewhat of a small antagonist like a giant magnet or i forget what those are called but you know can you know pick up the garbage or junk or whatever and so on like just desperately and trying to kill toaster and the gang but during the song you just the song worthless and it's a good song too because all the cars singing and like what they used to be and so on and as they're singing they're being thrown in like i'm being about to be crushed and there was one that that still was in the film and was almost close to being cut because of being too dark. A car just literally doing it himself, going in and basically k uh, killing himself, you know? Yeah, that was dark. And um, But that was a pretty good song, too. And the TV, trying to get the master's attention to have him go to that junkyard where the to where Toaster and the rest, of, the rest of them are at. And, of course, they do make their way... Um, and boy, this was, this was, this was evil and scary, like, you know, even when the Master finds them, I think except for Toaster, the, the giant magnet or whatever, still gets them, even with taking the Master, and this close to being crushed, but Toaster sacrifices himself by jamming him, jamming himself into the gears and stopping them, and all is, everybody is saved, and Toaster being repaired, all ends well, and they, uh, the, the items, like, well, from Toaster and the gang, they go with the Master and Chris to New Home and so on, and did I forget to mention that when they make their way to the cottage, the Master and Chris, they, one, one heartwarming scene, Chris, oh, not Chris, the Master does repair, um, air conditioner, the air conditioner, so, and yeah, that was a nice, nice scene there. And like, I guess air conditioner realized that, you know, the master does care. So of course, yeah. Um, but all ends well, as I just said. And um, is, is there anything else? Because I know I've been talking a lot and I do apologize, but is there anything else about about the film you want to say, Trent? Uh, like I said, I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but I've seen like a few bits of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
And after all, because, you know, Trent, he, he did want to do this with me. So, you know, and I still invited him. And even though I was, I was the, the one talking about the film the most, you know, still, you know, Trent, you did share, you did, you, even though you said that, even though you said you've not seen the whole film, like you, you've seen scenes and clips, etc. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's still, yeah, it's still good to have you on here uh, for the Brave Little Toaster, especially the Brave Little Toaster. But overall, because the Brave Little Toaster, it's a masterpiece. I I say it's a masterpiece. Um, it's an animation gem, and uh, I still consider it being a Disney film because so much to it and people from Disney working on it, etc. So, you know, and because it's been on Disney Channel, and from what I heard, like I read on IMDb that, that Disney did bought it, I, I could go on, but, you know... And you know what? The sequels, Disney did the, Disney, of course, did the sequels and they're on Disney Plus. And I wish that, you know, the, I wish that the first film could be on Disney Plus. Who knows? But um, we'll see what happens. You never know. But um, anything else to say about the film, Trent? Uh, I thought it was okay. okay. That was good. Okay, good, good. I rate this, uh, I mean, do you want to rate it, Trent, or how do you rate it? I'll rate the Brave Little Toaster uh, four out of five. Oh, okay. Five stars. All righty then. Well, for me, for me, well, boy, oh boy, because I'm I'm giving it ten out of ten. Because for me, I do like you know zero zero out of ten stars. Well, I'm doing ten out of ten. You get the idea. But anyway, okay. so okay, okay, nine out of ten. Sorry. <laughs> oh, so you're doing okay. So you'll do it nine out of ten. But for me, I'm doing it. Uh, the opposite of you, I've, you know, I'm doing 10 out of 10. So, I love the Brave Little Toaster. It's a, ma again, I think it's a masterpiece in my opinion. A ma and I think w without a doubt, uh, an animation gem. So anyway, so he rates it 9 out of 10 trend and I rate it 10 out of 10. So the ma the Brave Little Toaster, it's a, it is a masterpiece in my opinion. And I, as I said, uh, an animation gem and you guys let us know what you think of the Brave Little Toaster. If you've uh, ever seen it before, leave comments as always. Give it a like, you know. Um, any last words, Trent? Um, not really. <laughs> okay. But I would be happy for, for us to do more of these, more review collabs. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Maybe we'll possibly maybe we can possibly do the other uh, Brave Little Toaster sequels, you know, and they they are on Disney Plus, you know, as I mentioned. Yeah. Right. The Brave Little Toaster to the rescue and the Brave Little Toaster goes to Mars. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to review those and you know, I'm going to review those and hopefully I'll have uh, Trent with me to review them. We'll see what happens. Uh, that's later on. Uh, but for now, we've reviewed the Brave Little Toaster. So there you go. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, it was great to uh, once again, it was great to have you, Trent. Thanks, man. Yep. Look forward to us uh, reviewing something else again. And, you know, you requesting me to review something, as you've done before. So anyways, so with that being said, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, me and Trent's review of The Brave Little Toaster. More reviews coming your way. They're going to be awesome. Keep looking forward. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Well, we'll see you guys. I almost forgot to mention him. We'll see you guys in the next video slash review video. Want to say goodbye? <laughs> Bye, guys. Yep. And for me, take care and... Peace out.